In this video, I'm going to explain how indenting is the most important and most fundamental behavior you can cultivate for yourself in Rome. Indenting is the tool that allows references and queries to do their work at keeping related ideas together. Uh, they make those things work more effectively and more powerfully. Uh, if you indent well up front, uh, everything else will fall into place more readily and the chaos will become clearer more simply. Uh, now, in order to illustrate this, I actually took the key points that are down underneath this, uh, uh, this video on the Teachable page here, and I'm going to take them and I'm going to convert them back uh, into a Rome bullet format so you can see how indenting functions and how that might work uh, for you here. So if you happen to hear my child playing with blocks upstairs, I can't do much about that, but I don't think it'll be too distracting. So uh, the uh, what I'm converting back here, this first idea here is what I already said. Indenting is the most important and most fundamental behavior you can cultivate for yourself in Rome. The next block here, the next idea, uh, not only does it have a few different ideas in it, so this is probably more than one bullet point, it's also answering a why question about that first bullet point. And since it's that closely related to it, and Danny's the most fundamental and most uh, important behavior, and this one says why it's so fundamental, I will actually indent this underneath there. So indenting keeps related ideas together, and I'm not sure why it went to a document view, but we'll get the bullets back. Indenting keeps related ideas together. It facilitates queries. And I'm actually going to take off the indenting here because we don't need that anymore. It's all under indenting. Keeps related ideas together, facilitates queries and other power features, and it also turns multiple blocks from stream of consciousness into chunks of related meaning. So this is their first thought, and these are the three why um, related thoughts. This is why that happens that way. So it makes more sense to indent those underneath there. I look at make a little bit of note here, a couple of different ways to think of um, indenting. Analogies for indenting will do because these next two are, uh, the next three are actually very much uh, related to that. So some analogies for indenting. So we can think of top level blocks like the topping sentence of a paragraph. And then we're going to say underneath that, the indented blocks underneath are the supporting sentences. So now we have a little idea here. And then we'll come back up to the same level as the this one, because this is now a new analogy. Think of individual blocks like phrases. Anywhere a thought breathes, create a new block. And if that thing is hap it happens to be uh, deeply related to a previous thought, you can create that as an indent indented block underneath that. That one probably could live either as a sibling or a child. It's not an exact science. Uh, we'll talk about that here more in a moment. And our third analogy here. Think of indenting like poetry. So here's an analogy. We'll pop that out here. We'll say lines are like blocks. Stanzas are like a top-level block with a few blocks underneath. And related to that third one, new stanzas should get a top-level block. Okay, so I want to, you know, I kind of rushed through that. I want to talk you through my thought process there and how I got here. So you noticed right away I added this this block to the top uh, because I was going to hit three separate analogies here on the, uh, on the key points below when I'm on Teachable and there's no, you know, deep bulleting <laughs> uh, way of doing that on Teachable. I mean, I guess you could, but it wouldn't look great. Um, and there wouldn't be any semantic reason to do that uh, other than the syntactic relationship to the way it looks in Rome here. Um, oh, when I'm coming back from, from that in here, uh, it makes sense on that page to have those as three separate uh, checkpoints there, bullets. On here, in order for there to be a relationship between them, we need to create them, uh, create a top header in order to create that relationship. And what I might do, if I were doing that, and I had this was something I were going to do more often, is I put a little brackets around that. And now I have analogies for indenting. 
and I can go here and I can see all of these analogies for indenting. And if somewhere else um, on my uh, in my Rome graph, I think of another analogy for indenting and so tag it, that will also show up on the analogies for indenting page. Um, and as you can see, I can go all the way through and see every level of all of this uh, because I have this tagged up top, which makes that a lot um, easier, I think, to understand how that works. Um, and so I, I did these in this way so that you could see one, two, three. You can see the three analogies at the next level of block. And then the ideas about them, the supporting things, live a block deeper. So if you think of it like the topic sentence of a paragraph, you know, in this analogy, we're thinking about writing a research paper. Um, the topic sentence gets that topmost bullet in this, at least topmost in the cons in the uh, area here. Um, and then underneath that, any supporting sentences, any supporting ideas uh, would be uh, indented underneath and perhaps indented further, depending upon how they interrelate. You can also think of blocks like phrases. So when you're talking, there are natural places where you stop and you breathe. And those natural places where you stop and you breathe might be a new thought. Uh, one of the things when I teach singers, um, I borrow this from my friend Lee Blair, who says, new breath, new idea. Um, sometimes I say new idea, new breath, as well as a way of flipping that. But the, the thought is that each time there's a breath, there's something more, there's a change, there's a, there's a, there's a new addition to the thought process. Same concept here, when you have that moment of breath, uh, it gives you an opportunity uh, to create that new block. And if it's deeply related to the previous thought, as this one is, go ahead and indent further. You're creating new levels as you go. And so I could create this uh, individual blocks like phrases here, or maybe think of, or do some other way of doing that. Uh, and then it'll have its own its own page as well in there. And you can hop up to the level here from within that to see its siblings, um, though that requires an extra click as we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then of course you can think of it like poetry where the lines are like blocks and stanzas are like top level blocks um, that have a few blocks indented underneath them so that a new stanza would get a new top level block. I include these different analogies for you because I think that different people's brains uh, parse this in different ways. There is no one set in stone right way to decide what should be indented and what shouldn't. Um, but this is a nice, I think, analogy for thinking through those. So next up, page references rely on good re indenting to work effectively. So I'm showing that here in this area. If I were to have this, if I were to take all of these three and unindent them, so now I have this lovely analogies for indenting, um, and but nothing's indented underneath it. There, there are three things here. They're underneath it, but they're not indented underneath it. If I did that and I go here, analogies for indenting now has no place to go. I would have to just go back to the page and find it on the page to make sense of that. Uh, so this is why it's so important to indent well. If I don't have this indented, nothing is going to show up um, in that relationship. And so it doesn't do me any good um, to create these blocks um, and then or create this reference and then go to a new block if I'm not also indenting underneath that reference. If it's related, obviously. If it's not related, that's a different story. But if it's related, um, you have to use that in order to get the functionality out of those page references. So I want to talk, talk about relationships between blocks here. So we have two different kinds. We have the parent-child and we have the sibling. A parent-child relationship is when one block is indented beneath another block. Think of this as a parent block. Think of this as a child underneath it. This is a further child underneath that. So, I mean, you could call this the grandchild of this block, um, which is, I mean, legitimate, but not necessarily important to what we're talking about here. It's the it's the actual flow of parent to child uh, that uh, is important. And a parent-child relationship should be reserved for when something is deeply connected to the thought that came before it. Just remember, linked references uh, and those page references will not function correctly if you don't have those parent-child relationships set up. If you make take something deep, deeply related and make it two sibling blocks, 
uh, you can't get at that information. I mean, if it's further indented, like if this were indented um, underneath a couple more things, you might be able to get um, at, at some sibling things uh, by clicking around a bit, depending on what the depending on what you're trying to get at. Um, but you won't be able to find uh, the things that are meant to be underneath it unless you have created that parent child relationship. Not everything belongs in that kind of relationship, though. A sibling relationship is when two adjacent blocks are at the same level of indentation. And I should go further than that, necessarily. They don't have to be adjacent. There could be blocks in between them, but the blocks in between would all have to be children of that first parent. So a sibling would be two that are at the same level um, of indentation. Whether they're adjacent or not is not actually important, uh, but just to give you the idea there. Uh, so it's when they're at the same level of indentation, they're siblings. Uh, that can be useful. Oftentimes I will draft things in Rome um, in sibling uh, blocks when I get to the point where I'm actually writing out a script or uh, you know a scene for a novel or something like that. Um, those things live in sibling blocks because I want them to be uh, obviously all on the same level. Uh, sibling blocks can be used for things like three different types of the same thing. My topic sentence analogy, my interval blocks or phrases uh, um, uh, analogy, my indenting is poetry analogy. Um, all of those are at the same level of concept, so they're siblings. Um, it's just note, um, as we talked about already, references don't recognize those sibling relationships. And I say here, at least not without further clicking, depending on where you are, sometimes you can click up a level and see um, what's below them, but but it won't, uh, or what's um, where the siblings are, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily see what's underneath, what the children are. Um, if, well, I should say, <laughs> they wouldn't be children at all, but you wouldn't be able to see related stuff if you don't make them children, um, because they, they're existing in the wrong relationship. And then the last little note here, um, I say, um, important to remember, don't undervalue proper indenting. Don't just go from one block to the next and consider what relates to what, how they relate, and indent accordingly. So when you're working through and, 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 and taking your notes or doing whatever it is that you're doing in, in Rome, just remember indenting is really important because even if you're not, uh, you know, even if you're uh, just living on this page right now and just reading through and it feels fine, if you're ever trying to interconnect to that information, the indenting is what makes that powerful. The indenting is what makes that effective. If you haven't indented effectively, um, it's not that the things are unfindable, they're just harder to find, and they're harder to link and harder to connect. This is a fundamental behavior that you need to cultivate for yourself in Rome. Don't just go one to the box to the next. Think about what it, what that information is, how it relates to what came before it, how it relates to what comes after it, and make sure that your indenting reflects that. If it's deeply connected, indent. Create that parent-child relationship. If it's on the same level, if it's something that's another um, example of something, that's a sibling relationship and it can go, you know, one block to the next. So that's the fundamentals of indenting, as well as how that kind of interacts with page references. So when I get you, uh, when we're going to talk a little about the sidebar uh, first and then the, uh, and focus on block as a feature, but when we get to the workflow, the workflow of note taking relies very much on page references and indenting. Other things too, but those in particular. So we can kind of dig into this a little bit more when we arrive at that point.